Oh, hello, hello. So this is Thursday, and we are getting ready for Thanksgiving. And um, I, I'm freezing today. Yeah. So you can see us Houstonians, we're not used to the cold weather. So this is my snow bunny right here. She's all bundled up, gorgeous. I'm going to introduce Amanda Womanima. Perfect. And I absolutely adore Amanda. Oh my gosh, let me tell you about Amanda. Oh. She has given me so much confidence in the last year and a half. Oh. And uh, when I first started out, I always watched beauty queens and pageants on TV. Um, you know, there were times where I was like, how do those women do it? Mm -hmm. How? I mean, it was to me so unreachable. It really, in my, in my mind, in my thoughts, it was unreachable. Mm -hmm. And um, just at that time in my life and in my family and everything, it was just something that you didn't even think about. So I would see the beautiful women walk up there and um, just so filled with confidence. And I thought that was so, that's the most beautiful quality a woman can have, is her confidence. And so whenever I met Amanda, um, I remember she came in and she had just the confidence that that I admired so much. Aww. And uh, she so she comes in gracefully, uh, very confident, always put together, has it together, and I really admired that about her. And I thought, okay, this is a person that I want to work with forever. Aww. And so whenever I figured out that Amanda was actually in charge of, you know, basically, you know, half or the full show um, <laughs> that we did for Beauties of the Universe. I, she did an amazing job. Oh, and um, whenever we were finished, I said, I want to work with her because I saw the confidence in her. And then also, um, you just, you're so level-headed. And whenever I see Amanda, if she wants something, she goes for it. Right. And the one thing I heard the other day, we were actually doing the um, 2020 pageant for African America. Um, we were doing kind of a, a rehearsal, recap, everything, and that will actually be coming up soon in January. And so look for that live. But we were actually backstage, and you know, I heard her say she was working very hard. And this is this is a woman that I admire so much. But she was working so hard and diligently on all of these uh, sashes and crowns for for all the girls. And um, you know, they're going to one day wear these things. So I was thinking this. Girl, and I was asking myself, well, why isn't she asking where there's so many people here? We could be helping. Right. But she's like, I like to do things myself. So I saw at that moment, I saw so much of myself in her. Mm -hmm. Because for me, um, there are a lot of things I cannot do that I just won't even touch. But about 90% of the time, I like to do things myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just the type of person that I almost would rather do it by myself and right. to make sure it gets done. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's something I cannot touch, such as technology, um, I'm not great with technology, yeah. so a lot of my stuff ends up getting put on the back burner and I thought, okay, I just need a manager to get my stuff together right. and I, it will be okay. Mm -hmm. But 90% of the time, I am one of those, like you, I just want to do it. Right. I want to do it because I can depend on me. Right. And I think that's where, um, you know, we come in as women. We try and we strive so hard to do things by ourselves. And then, um, you know, we, we have so much, I'm not going to say stresses, but we do put a lot on ourselves. We are overachievers. Um, and we definitely have such high goals mm -hmm. and for women of empowerment or women in the world today I saw and I didn't realize that there are 270 what was those numbers like 240 billionaires that are women in that's the world number. 240 billionaires that's a, that's a huge number and so that got me thinking why why what what do these women have that I don't have? 
or that, that you know, you and tapped that into I yet. haven't tapped into mm -hmm. yet. Absolutely. So I started thinking about it and I thought, what is it? So I started going through the entire list of what women are, you know, how women get to that plateau. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these women are like Bill Gates's, you know, children, whatever, you know, um, they, they were born into uh, that lifestyle inheritance, inheritance right. and so they ran with it. But some of them are self CEOs, self-made, mm -hmm. YouTube, Facebook, those were the top. Right. So I thought, that, and then some of them like Oprah, Media, uh, Mongola, and she is absolutely amazing. Right. She started with a talk show. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, and you see her growing it. And she grew. Mm -hmm. She grew so, I mean, huge. Right. And now she has her own network. Right. And uh, so I was looking at all that, and I thought, this is not something that I could not attain. Right. Or I could not reach. This is not something you or anyone else. And I know, uh, if you know Amanda, she's actually the CEO <laughs> of her own. Um, and tell, it, tell me a little bit about that. Well, so I have a production company called Out Weekend. Uh -huh. Production is a Out Weekend LLC. It started off in uh, Florida where we had it registered in 2011. And so we produce anything from concerts to pageants to conferences, artwork, uh, fashion shows. So it's pretty much spread as a production company. Uh, we do tap into a lot of the entertainment industry. Um, and we are focusing a lot on pageantry because um, I saw a lack in the industry, especially mm -hmm. for the African pageants and wanted to have sort of a gateway to get it um, into the mainstream part of pageantry uh, so that you know, we will get into the numbers with like, Miss Universe and Miss World and mm -hmm. Miss Earth, the big four, Miss International. Um, when I started looking at those numbers and seeing how very few of them had African delegates there. Mm -hmm. I saw that there was a void, and that that was a way for me to come in and try to fill that void. And starting, you know, slowly here in the United States and spreading it because, um, you know, United States is a big power uh, yes. country. So when you start off something here, a lot of people will pay attention, especially if you put America in the subtitle of it. Right. A lot of other countries will pay attention, and I, I wanted to have that kind of platform so that other countries uh, in Africa especially can pay attention to it and maybe that will be a gateway to bring those African countries into the big mm -hmm. platform. So tell me a little bit about that because I, I had the pleasure in uh, meeting and working with some of the girls um, just to prep them. They've got a, a few months to go mm -hmm. um, and they are, they are beautiful. Right. And so I was working with them and I got to uh, see their confidence. Mm -hmm. And just, oh my gosh, you're doing such an amazing job with oh, these girls. You. And you've started so young. I felt so old going in there oh, because no. these girls are are beautiful. They're young. They're vibrant. Mm -hmm. There's so much confidence in right. them. Um, and they came from uh, Nigeria, Ethiopia. I mean, so many places right. all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's really impressive to me. Right. I think that's amazing because not only, yes, we work in the U.S., right. but to me, when you think of a confident, beautiful woman, and you put them all together, you want to see all of the different cultures. Right. You want to see their background, their history. When you do things like the uh, dances and things like that, right. that, that makes the stage come alive to mm -hmm. me. So I, I myself, that, that is one of my favorite things is um, the different cultures and the way they uh, build themselves, they get out there. And that's actually most of them I talked to, that was their favorite. Right. They were so excited just to tap into their nationality, their heritage, right. all of that. And so I thought it was so, so cool. Um, so I... Definitely am excited and looking forward to what Art Awaken is going to do in the future. Oh, awesome. And I know that you're going to take it very, very far. Um, so Amanda is actually from Florida. Florida. Right? Yeah. Florida? Yeah, yeah she moved. <laughs> <laughs> so she moved with us here to Houston. I'm actually um, 
I would say, uh, I, I'm from other states too, so um, Houston, I've lived in seven years, mm -hmm. and it, it just took me home. I mean, this is home for me now, right, right, right. and so I don't know how you feel about that, but it is an amazing place. It really is. Yeah, so Florida is home for me. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know it. It knows me. And <laughs> <laughs> Houston is where my family was. Oh, so okay. my family is here. My mother, my sister, my two brothers, my niece and nephews. So it took a while for my sister to convince me to come and, and live here. And finally it happened. Yeah. So I've been here for years. Went through Hurricane Harvey, of which when I was in the boat. Oh, being, I remember that. Right. Being, being, you know, ashed out of the house in a boat and going through the neighborhood and saying all that and thinking, why did I move here? <laughs> and then again, I remembered in Florida, we went through a bigger hurricane. Yes. And then I was like, well, kind of the same climate. And so the weather is the same. And right. Although, of course, everybody knows that Texas is bigger. Right. You know, and then in Houston, it's bigger. And so I've gotten used to that. You know, <laughs> like, traveling long distances just to go, like, downtown and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I was trying to explain that the other day to some of the girls. They're like, it's so big. I'm like, right. here's the thing with Houston. Um, our roads are, we have huge highways. Right. So, yes, you may travel a longer distance, mm -hmm. but we have several downtowns that, you know, you can, right. they're kind of segregated in mm -hmm. a way. Um, you've got the Houston Zoo. You've got, you know, the major things. And you've got one with the stadium and right. things like that. So, I was like, I will drive a little bit further just to enjoy those highways. <laughs> so, yeah. I was thinking about that and I think, why did they do that? But it was actually a really intelligent decision on their part. Yeah. But, Which um, is also good about bringing like a, a group of young girls like that together and bringing them to a city that they've never been to. Yes. A lot of them, it was their very first time to be in Houston. So, and kind mm -hmm. of feel a little guilty for not really showing them. They loved it. Because we really have very short minimum of time. Right. But what they got to see, they appreciated. Now they're going back to their respective cities and states having ticked off Texas yeah. on their list. Yes. Yes. And that all happened because a group of young people came together and decided to be in this one pageant. So it's, um, it, it all comes back to the women empowerment and women coming yes. together, right? Um, creating opportunities for them, even mm -hmm. if it's just coming to a state that they've never been to. Right, because yeah. uh, chances are one of them will come back for right. forever. <laughs> um, so that being said, Women empowerment, you guys, this is something I see a lot of lately, women. Women have such a strong voice and they want to be heard. Um, so whenever I go on uh, Facebook, Instagram, any of those things, most of the time I see women. Women doing amazing things. I'm not saying you guys aren't doing great things. They are, but I see a lot of women doing a run of production companies. I mean, they are really taking it and they're they're really going uh, big places. And so whenever I, yes, I mean, they're taking it to the top. And, and I think that is, um, in 2019, it, 2018 was a little different. I think a lot of people were um, finding themselves, um, especially the people, I, I would say a lot of people, a lot of people on my you know, feed and things, finding themselves, kind of getting out there, and then boom, 2019 hit, and I'm seeing all of these women do so many great things. Right. And um, they've moved here from other cities, other countries, things like that. Houston is growing so rapidly. Right. Oh my gosh, and a lot of people from California moving to Houston, that's one of the um, main cities, and so actually um, they said that Houston was becoming the new uh, California. Oh, that's awesome. So I was like, that's awesome, but is it because of the traffic? No, it's right. going to be crazy, right. but we love, you know, California is great, wonderful, but in full of amazing people, so my thoughts were, how much larger is Houston going to get, and how big is uh, production um, as far as like the actors, uh, filmmakers, directors, we're, they're going to grow drastically. Right. We had, even though Houston is full of, uh, I think about uh, in the Harris County, uh, 5 million to 11 million, all of the Harris County area, but it's so small. And it's really hard for people to understand that mm -hmm. because when you're in the um, model entertainment industry, acting and things like that, and you're in the Houston area, it's very small. Right. Very, very small. Mm -hmm. 
So everyone kept wanting to the new Atlanta, you know, uh, all the all the major cities, LA, um, they wanted that for Houston. Well, it's happening. It's happening and I tell people jump on board right now because when it grows rapidly, um, so fast, it's going to be hard and you will get left behind. Right. And I say that because when you go to LA and you want to be a woman in power, um, there are so many you're competing with right. um, as far as actors, models, you know, even pageants. There's there's millions. Of course. When you come to Houston, you have a golden opportunity right here. You right. really to do. Plug in to and plug and in, to in. network, mm -hmm. and there's so many uh, fashion shows. I mean, women I see right and left. They're putting on every week is a new fashion show, right. something big, and if you keep at it and keep growing, build your confidence and do all of those things you will grow with the city right. um, so we are I mean women empower right now with all of the women even I was looking um, all the females uh, going you know on NASA they are going in on to the moon right. uh, all females and so that to me I was like what in the world is going on all females I have um, all of the women billionaires ages 40 40 is like the the prime right now for which is women. Great, which I'm is be 40 great. next year absolutely so I'm like <laughs> 40s is is the age right, to where right, these right. women have gotten it together mm -hmm. they're building their plateaus and, and I think they're at that time too, you, you you've you've gone through your 20s which yes. everybody knows those are your discovery years you know you're trying to see exactly who you are and you know, you you know, party day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, you go and self discovery, and then you know, your thirty years. You know, you you kind of start planting yourself. Yes. You know, and and seeing what career paths you want to go through, and really just establishing that. And then for it is really just like when you sit in that cruise control, right? You do. You've done That's all true. that you've done in your twenties and your thirties, and then now you, you you set your speed, mm -hmm. you know, at the appropriate speed <laughs> limit, <laughs> at the appropriate speed mm -hmm. limit, and just cruise, yes. and then just cruise and see what you know life has to offer for you, and you just take take it by the board. Right? So what so. what advice would you give your girls when you're working with them to listen, set them down, and say listen? This is, these are the steps that you take, and these are the ones that, you know, things to avoid. What would you right, tell them? Right, and you them? know, like I said, they, a lot of them are in their 20s. So the youngest mm -hmm. was, um, with, both of them were 20, and all the way up to probably about 26, I think was the oldest. So they're in that age, okay. you know, that is self-discovery. And I, I tell them not to... Uh, put themselves in one box because when in your 20s really is I think the time when you need to try out a, a, a couple of things. Absolutely. One or two, three things that that's great now you know and if you're blessed to have that kind of mindset there's those people that are you know from 10 years old they know that they want to be doctors which right. is great. Yes. You know it's 10 you know you, you want to be a doctor and you just go in that and then for a selected few of us that are not blessed with that gift of knowing <laughs> at 10 years old that you want to be Do you a think doctor. it's more forced, though, like from parents? Do you think it's something that they Well, do? when you say that, it comes with where I come from, you know, African parents. Okay. Uh, a lot of the African parents, my, my parents were not really that way, even though my father was a little strict with education. My mom was like, oh, you go to school, you go to school. But a lot of African households, if you are not a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, you're a failure. Really? Pretty much. They'll even take an accountant. You know? Wow. Yes. You know? And so anything that doesn't bring you a doctorate. That makes me. That, that's <laughs> why when you go to the hospital, like you're. Uh, it's so many. You see, are like so Nigerians? Yes. A lot of Nigerians, a lot of. Wow. Um, right, a lot of foreign uh, Africans. So it's. A lot of that is built in. So when you're going to school. They, you know, they're telling you doctor, 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 lawyer, 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 engineer, 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 and you know, uh, accountant, accountant. They, they, you know, it's those. It's embedded. Yeah, right? It's embedded in you. So, um, yeah, a lot of it is pressure from family, uh, but again, there's just those people that are blessed with knowing. They mm -hmm. just know, you know, this is what they want to do, and they go for it. But those that don't, uh, in their twenties, I tell them this is a really perfect time because. You are past, you know, the, yes. the childhood age. Yes. You're past 18. 
You can make your own decisions. You're going off to college. This is a good time for you to just kind of tap into a couple of things. Wow. You know, get a major that is, that will leave you open yes. to changing it here and there. Mm -hmm. Just you know, just in case. Because I had a lot of friends that went in and did four years and then ended up going completely different in the four and years I, that they did in the beginning <laughs> yeah. did not even help them to where they're going now. Right. You know, did not, right. not really, you know, it's, it's almost true. like they're starting over again. And, and they only did those four years because people kept telling them, oh, you have to already know what you're going in, your career you're going to, and then they're 25 and thinking, I don't want to why be a dentist. Yeah. You know, why? Why you know, didn't I do yeah. that? Yeah. And, and then they then they realize I actually want to do law, and then coming from yeah. dentistry to law, and then then they go into law, or they don't want to do law and they want to do you know yeah. you know yeah. dentistry, Absolutely. and then so yeah. So the, so I always just tell them you know go, uh, but keep an open mind, try a couple of things. And it's also a good time to intern, right? Yes, intern absolutely. For different intern. Companies. Yeah, intern. intern for different companies. Do all kinds of volunteer yes. work. Yes, volunteer a lot. Yeah. With, different, with yes. different organizations, different um, uh, places, companies mm -hmm. uh, that do a completely different thing. You know, you could go from, like, you could say office work to entertainment yes. to environmental. So that way you, you really have a good idea of, you know, of what you want to do. And I think, I, you know, and that brings me back to, I was walking in the hospital one day and I thought, and, and I was looking at the, all the beautiful people and it's so diverse, especially in Houston. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how, how does this work? You know, um, and, I, and I was thinking to myself, you know, is this something they chose as a child? But, you know, then I was thinking, maybe not. Um, so yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I think to me, I even said one time, I said, I almost wanted to um, have a child, like, you know, or adopt a child very, very young and, and see, and, and it's kind of sounds crazy, but I was like, and see, and see if you can put, you know, those things in, in their, in their brain. Mm -hmm. And because you can mold, you know, when you're a young baby, you, your parent can start molding you. And if they really are hands on with you, they can teach you so much that the world cannot teach well, you. Well, those are the learning years, too, yes, right? That's why it's years. easier for a child to pick up a language, pick Absolutely. up a talent. You know, a lot of uh, parents that put their children in like music school yes. or you know, learning an instrument. It's easier and at, I, at that time because of those are the learning years. They're the learning so. years. And I thought, why do we not do more of that? But I'm starting to I see it. Yeah, you're right. All right. And I, I thought, why? I do have an acoustic guitar that I need to perfect. <laughs> do you really? Yes, I do. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. So, and that that is so amazing to me because um, that it, you are able to bring out so many different talents and so many so many ways. I mean, there are kids out there, and they are graduating college at you know 17, 18 years old. And I thought, why don't we all do this? Why does that everyone? Because number one, the, you can go to, and, and these are for women, guys out there, whatever, you can stick your child in homeschool, but it's actually online public school, but you have the um, hands-on experience with them every single day. And then not only that, you have time, you know, if you're a stay-at-home parent, you can take them to um, learn different languages, uh, art abilities, all kinds of things. Um, so I thought, you know, it would be really neat because, you know, you have children and later on you kind of think, like, why didn't I do this with my child? Right. So you want to, you know, take a child and almost mentor them and see what you can do right. and see how great they can be. You know, not that all children are not great, but you just kind of want to get and bring all of those talents out of them. So I always tell people now when they have the little ones, get them um, into some uh, activities. Don't let them quit and right. fail. That's the thing is we, um, in society, we have become, I'm not going to say lazy, but we're a little spoiled. Right. Um, and we have allowed our children just to quit, you know, when, oh, yeah, I don't want to do it. It's too hard right. or something like that. So then they we become right. very sensitive also. Very with, sensitive. Like, with um, trying to... You know, not really baby, but you know, yeah, we're baby. You don't want mm -hmm. the, the the court of public opinion to put you on trial for encouraging your child to to do something. Correct. Because then, then, oh, are you forcing them to be, you know, this, and then that's not what they want to do. Absolutely. But you know, like you're saying, when we were growing up, we didn't really have all this like technology and all this 
games and so on. We went outside. We, you know, we climbed a tree. <laughs> we played, we played with sticks. rocks. <laughs> you know, and, and I was thinking about it the other day. Oh my God, I actually played with rocks. Like, yeah. we, we grabbed rocks together and I did this with my, my, uh, my nieces and nephew. I showed them a game that we used to play when I was young that had you know, to do with rocks. And they were sitting there going, this is so hard. <laughs> and I'm thinking, no, it's only it's, it's hand-to-eye coordination. Right. You have to take the, you put like a bunch of rocks in a circle. Okay. And then you take one rock and you throw it up in the air. As it goes in the air, you're supposed to take out one or two from the big bunch, put set them aside, grab the rock. Oh, wow. Right? And then when you throw it back up, you put the rest of it inside. Okay. And you wrap it again. Whatever you have left off so is okay. yours. So that's yours. Wow. So if you do that enough times without dropping the rock mm -hmm. as you throwing it up, then you know you win. So the more rocks you collect, the you know you won. So then I'm, I, I I showed them how to do it, and I, I and I did it a couple of times, and they were their minds were blown. Yeah, and yeah. then how do you do that? <laughs> and I said, well, it's just you know it's it's hand and, and, and mm -hmm. you know and eye coordination. You just have Practice. to you know coordinate yeah. how you do it. And they're thinking, oh my god, you're a genius. And then I'm sitting here going, oh my god, yeah. yeah you know, why can't you? I'm just a genius, <laughs> you know. But I can't do all those video games that they're games. doing, and right. like, the way that to me, I'm thinking, how do you do that? How are you making that thing kick? By going Absolutely. left and right and all of that. And that takes a lot of hand eye right. coordination. It, it does. Yeah. So yeah. that is their hand and right. eye coordination. Sure. And then, you know, ours is different. And, and so, yeah, there's a, a lot of like uh, differences in, in how we were brought up. Right. You know, and that's theirs. And we need to, you know, kind of find a balance. Mm -hmm. But also, I think trying to take them away from it a little bit and bringing them outside, you know, yes. playing physically, you know, with your hands and. Finding things to play with is also important, so, you know, because then you, you get them oh, yeah. to, to have like a creative mind. You have instead to instead of just depending on, on plugging something in, you know, and then and, and getting entertainment from that. Yeah, because you cannot be a billionaire at 40 years old if you're sitting right there in your home and not experiencing the world. I really find that hard. I mean, unless you're just, you know, IT, you know, I can't say Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. Yes, I'm sure he's that. But, you know, you have to have those life experiences. Um, even women, these women empower, they go out and they're networking every day. They're uh, learning, they're experiencing, they, they have that drive and motivation behind them. And I was listening and I was reading and listening to a podcast earlier, really encouraging. I love encouraging um, podcasts, TV shows, things like that, especially whenever it has to do with um, children and young adolescents who have struggled and gone through things and then they've overcome them and right. become very successful. Mm -hmm. To me, that takes a lot of uh, dedication, a lot of motivation. And so when I see that, it is a beautiful thing to me. Right. So I was going and I was reading some of their things. You know, um, what Heather uh, Thompson, she's the president and founder of Yummy Tummies. And she, you know, she was like, embrace your flaws. Mm -hmm. Embrace all of your flaws and you're a full package and no one can take you apart. And, and so I was reading all of these things and a lot of them were like, you know, confidence. When you think of confidence, um, number one, the first thing in confidence is groom yourself. Right. The second one was dress nice. Work on your self image, think positive, kill negative thoughts. All of these things. So when you're young, grab a book and read all about confidence and all of these things. It's so important. Otherwise, how are you going to learn all of these things, especially if you don't have, you know, you have two working parents and, and um, you know, maybe mom or dad doesn't have time to sit and right. teach you all those things. Mm -hmm. There are so many tools out there that we should be filled with knowledge. I mean, we should know so much. And if you don't know, you can Google it or whatever. And but we can find it. Yeah, it's great now because everything's really at your fingertips. It right? is. And it's it is. Find. And before, you know, you had to walk mm -hmm. to a library, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And then you had to have that library card. If you, and then yeah. if you walked all the way to the library, and I'm talking walking because mm -hmm. where, you know, where, I was, where I was raised, you had to walk. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk all the way there and you forgot your library card at home. You're not getting into the library. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Banda, you know me. Nobody <laughs> you have to have your library card. 
you know, right. now you don't, you know, you don't have to, you know, go through all of that. And and sometimes it baffles me, and I think it's just because I'm the aunt when you know the young kids, I, you know, I mean, what does this mean? What does that mean? I'm thinking to myself, you have a phone, mm -hmm. you're holding the phone next to you, and you're asking me what this is. Ask Google. Google is your favorite. <laughs> Ask Google, and and so and I'm trying to like let them know that you know the answers are really pretty much at your fingertips. You can yes. just go. And I, I remember one time I was sitting in the car and I can't even remember what the word was, but there's a word <laughs> that was used and my nephew kept asking me, what is that, what is that? And I, I deliberately did not answer him because I knew he had his yeah. phone and I knew all he had to do was just search it. Wow. You know, And it took a good 20 minutes of a car ride, him asking wow. me what this word meant. Yeah. And then finally, he just, you know, he realized, oh, I can search it. And then he went on his phone and he searched it. And my other nephew is like, you really endured 20 minutes of 20. him. And, you know, he's, he's six. It's good for so them. So, he, you know, it, it's, it, it doesn't matter for him. He just keeps repeating it and repeating it in 20 minutes. And then I said, you know, yeah, because I want him to, to realize, mm -hmm. you know, he can, he can just go. I don't have to tell him all the time because if I keep telling him answers. Right. Or telling yeah. him how to find the answers is still not having the chance to learn. And, and right? I think that's what happens with a lot of parents today is they just, they get so time consumed with uh, work mm -hmm. and, you know, just your busy personal lives. So, you know, when little Johnny comes and they want an answer, it's you know, just, just, to just, it. just to say it's it. It's easy to say it or it's easy yeah, to say Google it. Yes, you know, absolutely. Instead of letting them uh, find, find, their, find their way to, to do absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I was um, trying to teach um, this girl one time, and I, I don't want to mention who she is, but I was trying to teach her how to become a wealthy person mm -hmm. because um, she didn't, you know, and I, I come up, I didn't have money handed to me, but I was, you know, giving her different steps, different ways that she can become a wealthy person. And, or, or at least if, she, if it wasn't in her time, it could be for her children. Right. And so I was telling her, hey, you know, these are some things that you can do. I know she drinks coffee every day. That's five dollars six dollars a cup right? right so I was telling her hey this is you know for one savings is a huge investing you have to invest in yourself I mean that is a big big thing you mm -hmm. have to do that the other thing is um, you know when you have things like coffee you know you add that up so that's 30 30 dollars a week right. you know 120 180 dollars a month mm -hmm. um, for for coffee and so I thought if you want your children be, to become successors and you want to do great things with them, take that money and invest back into their future. Right. Get them a, you know, set, you have a 401k, you don't have that, get them a life insurance policy. Set them up, teach them the fundamentals that they need to know so that they can have a chance in, later in life. Mm -hmm. Take that five or six dollars you're spending on coffee and, and put that towards life insurance policies or put it back in your 401k mm -hmm. or things like that. Right. Uh, teach them penny stocks. That's a, that's a huge thing, penny stocks. Um, now is Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Take a chance, you have an extra few hundred dollars. I know somebody who had a thousand dollars and they're multi-millionaires today because of Bitcoin back in the day. Right. It's an investment. But it got, it, if you got a, and I'm saying a few hundred extra dollars, don't go in debt for it. And but actually, when you talk about like a six, a six dollar cup of coffee, you know, somebody mm -hmm. sitting right there and going, yeah, right, a six dollars lady, come on, yeah. you know. But, uh, it, of course, but I'm not good at math. My, <laughs> my, 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 my nephew is really good. He would have already figured this out right One now. But I, I'm, I'm cheating. <laughs> I, 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 no, I have, I, I have a calculator. So if you take, <laughs> if you, uh, if you take your $6 mm -hmm. by 30 days, by um, 12 months, that's 2160 Okay? So you, now think about that. And then, and then you, you do it by three years, by four years. Right. Yes, yeah, so, okay, I'm not, we're not saying that don't drink a coffee, right. but make it, it make it at home, yes, right, absolutely. And, it, and it will be, oh, oh, you know what, 50 cents maybe, or a yes. dollar a yes. day instead of six dollars a day. Absolutely. So when you do that, so there's teachable moments mm -hmm. every single day that you can teach these young, young women and young ladies Good that nice. would help them, and especially when you do the numbers, on, I, I always do that with our girls, whenever mm -hmm. they, they come and they get into the pageant system and everything, I run numbers by them. 
it's always about a number state. Absolutely. Hey, when you take this, you know, multiply it by this. And I, I'm always transparent and so I show them everything yes. that goes into production, everything that we have to mm. pay for. I love that. So that way they see. They need, you know, to, know. They need to know, mm -hmm. too, when they're there, when they're part of it, they are they're proud of, one, being able to be part of that production. Mm -hmm. They know that them being there contributed to the whole scheme of things. Absolutely. Right? Everything that happens there. And I don't want to talk to you when you were talking about uh, advising somebody about you know being wealthy and, and how to save money and you know mm -hmm. example of a, a, a coffee. Uh, whenever I'm talking to this, these young ladies, and you know this, when they're getting ready for competition, there is a lot of like clothes that come into play, right? Correct. Shoes and gowns, and and a lot of people think that they have to be expensive. Correct. You right. know, because we live in a world of the labels, right? Right. What label are you wearing? Is it designer? Is it, you know, this? Mm -hmm. Is it non? Is it popular? Is it trending? Fashion Nova? Is anybody going to know when they cut out the tag? Right. <laughs> what it is. And unfortunately, that's where we are. That's, that's the, yeah. the way, you know, we, we're living. Uh, I thank goodness I'm not affected by that. Right. <laughs> right. You know? So, and I tell them, be smart. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that you're going to wear maybe once on stage. You might wear it maybe at a wedding or you know some uh, a bowl of function. But the chances of you wearing it over and over again right. is very 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 small. So why are you going to spend tons of money Absolutely. on 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 something that yeah. you're only going to wear for you know a short period of time? So I always tell them to be smart about the right. shopping. You know, I told them to go, and then they, you know, some of them go to the Goodwill, the Salvation so, Army. So they look at me weird when I say that because one, they will go on my social media, mm -hmm. right, and see all these great photo shoots and great, mm -hmm. you know, things that. I, and I, some of them, I tell them, okay, some of them are not mine, right? And some of them, exactly. are, I, if they're my pieces, I make sure that where I buy them, honestly, yeah. you would, you would not believe. Go the to the yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Go to the retail stores, go to Goodwill, go to Salvation Army, you know. I got this marvelous movie. dress for $7.99, mm -hmm. wow. I'm so proud of it. I need to take a picture of it and put it on social media just so Please that people can yeah. see that, you know, you don't have to go and spend all this money. Nobody's going to know. Absolutely. And if you don't have one of the, you know, one of those people who are like, oh no, I can't buy something that somebody else has worn. Take it to the dry cleaners. Yes. Uh, let me let, let me not. let me break your bubble. Yeah. Everything that you mm -hmm. see in a clothing store, <laughs> somebody <laughs> has worn it. Yeah, they think they it. have to put it on to make sure that it fits perfectly. Right. Even if, it, if it's not you, it's a mannequin. It's a mannequin that somebody has been holding with oh, their sweaty yeah. hands and all of this. They all the people in the factory. In the factory, <laughs> somebody is holding it with their nice juices. So it's not brand new. If you buy something from the store and you haven't taken it to the dry cleaners, you know, you're and wearing I, something that somebody has handled, so it's you know it could be brand new, but somebody still has handled it. Absolutely, and yeah. and that comes back to hair and things like that. Let me tell oh, yeah. you something: you can do amazing things with hair. Um, you don't have to spend five hundred dollars on your makeup. And I was trying to teach girls this. You know, there are a lot of expensive, very expensive makeup products and stuff out there. But I promise you, you can go somewhere else and you can find it half the price. You don't have to do that. It's okay every once in a while. And I tell people this, splurge like once a year, but make it count. Right. Make it count. May, if you're splurging once a year, um, I can take, I'm not even kidding, I have gotten it down so good to where I can take a family of four on a vacation, like to another country for around $2,500. And I'm not, you know, and I, I have, um, I really have gotten smart with money over the years. And I think about all of the money that I have wasted mm -hmm. and why, and I thought, why didn't someone teach me or help me to invest in myself and my family for my future, things like that. I never understood it. I didn't understand. My dad was, a, a, he had money. Okay, I never saw the money, of course. Um, and he's uh, in, you know, he passed away many years ago, but he was very smart. He had a fourth grade education, mm. fourth grade education, but the man was brilliant, brilliant with, with numbers. 
So it got him to, by the time, in his 20s, he was a millionaire. And so I think about how intelligent you have to be to be come from nothing and have a fourth grade education right. and, and to work yourself up and to be, you know, a, a millionaire in your 20s. No, it doesn't sound a lot now, but when you think of like the oh, 80s and yeah. you're, you know, <laughs> um, you know, in the 80s and you're, you've got, it's crazy. And right. so I tell people, don't waste money on, on things like coffee. Um, I will do, for me, I don't drink coffee. My, my habit is Diet Coke. So um, every and that that is a big thing that I'm trying to break. But if you if you really calculate, and I I did one time, I calculated how much I spent on Diet Coke, and it made me so sick. I was right. like, I could have paid off my vehicle with the oh. amount I spent on Diet Coke. Oh, I'm yeah. not even kidding. And right, I thought right. Diet Coke, the Coca Cola, needs to be like sponsoring me right. so that I, you know, I can do that. But it was really disgusting to me, and I was so yeah, I was so <laughs> upset with myself, and I thought I've got to stop. Like right. I really have to stop. So that is my flaw. But I have also learned that with my extra spendings and things like that, that to put it back into 401k or to um, get these uh, life insurance policies. And I tell my kids, you know what? Take that money. Don't go blow it. Let me tell you something. I want $50,000. And I'm a, I can't remember what year it was. But I hit a $50,000 jackpot, right? Mm -hmm. So I won it. I was young and dumb, and I didn't know how to spend it. I didn't know what to do with it. Right. Guess what I did? I went out and got a car. I went out and bought a boat. Like, mm -hmm. I bought the stupidest stuff. I did pay some debt off. Well, right. well actually, all my debt, because I had hardly know that. But I went and done the dumbest things. And now I think about it, and I thought, what if I had taken even half of that? and put it back into um, penny stocks or, you know, even Facebook or, you know, any kind of stuff. Right. I would have, you know, that was my opportunity. Don't let opportunities pass you by. Right. When you come across, and that's how all of these women become so successful, because they have not allowed opportunities to it's pass them by. Right. They, they take that moment and they do something amazing with it. So those $6 cups of coffee, they add up very quickly. The um, shoes and all the clothes. You may go to my Pinterest and, and I will have designer things. Let me tell you, um, I, I never, ever spend that much anymore, ever. I have had things for a while or whatever, but I don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I have learned to be very thrifty as I've gotten older. Even though right. I'm making like way more, we make way more. I'm right. so much more thriftier. Right. And I thought, you know, um, when I was in my 20s and I had the extra money for things or, you know, even in the 30s or whatever, and I had the extra money, I would go spend it. I would right. spend a hundred and something dollars on eyelashes or you know hair or things like that and now right. I'm like why did I do that mm -hmm. like why and now I you know I look at my pictures now and from when I was younger yes of course I looked younger <laughs> but uh, yes I, I absolutely look way you younger. still look fabulous but, uh, <laughs> but you know I think I can't tell the difference in my makeup products right I can't tell the difference with my clothing actually mm -hmm. I have nicer clothes, and I'm not. I'm so thrifty. Like I will go to the thrift Listen, stores or you know I, wherever. I cleaned out my closet, yeah. and I grabbed all this stuff, and I'm thinking I'm sending this to Africa. Mm, and then that. the hurricane happened, and mm -hmm. then we couldn't we couldn't send them, and a lot of them had left flooded, so I had to go through them and clean them up, and then rebox them and I said, like, oh yeah, now we're gonna send them. So as I was reboxing, I'm going through this stuff, and I'm saying, oh my god, this is cute. Well, I can wear this again. <laughs>
And then the, again, there's some things I'm looking at it. It's like this small. Oh thing. God! I know. How did I fit in this little thing? It was this a clothing? Is this a scarf? Is this a glove? I don't know. What? It's a skirt? No way! Yeah, and I'm. You know, I've done so, that. I've yeah. grabbed shirts and I'm like, wait, was this a skirt? Was right. that a shirt? Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know what what I it's wore. It's good to be young <laughs> and have a small waist. It's really but nice. But you young girls out there, um, I've got some girls coming on next week. So they're. Um, Visco girls. So you know the the little trend Visco girls. When I was, um, you know, in the '90s, like we wore Birkenstocks, scrunchies, all of those things, right? Now it's come back around, but the the trend is Visco girls. So I have some girls who are actually in junior high, and they're going to be on next week. And I'm going to do like a, a comparison, a time warp mm -hmm. of of the trends and how they just boom come back around. Mm -hmm. So I told my daughter, I was like, save your stuff, like because I promise you, in like 20 years, that stuff. I'm not saying save all fashion. of it, yeah, right, right. but save I've a got, few things. Right it will come back yeah. around again. So I started this yes. trend. Yes, there is this trend. You know, because I was born in uh, 1980, so I started this trend like four years ago on my birthday. Yeah, I dressed up as an 80s girl. Oh. So I, I did the whole thing with the gloves and everything. So wow. this year I look a, a, a cross between Cindy Lauper and Whitney Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a, a like a disco ball. I was so shiny. I had big blonde hair. It was fabulous. Yeah, I love that. I need to see that picture. I was I was watching um, Donnie Wahlberg and um, he was pulling out his Michael Jackson jacket right. and all that, and I was like, I had a Michael Jackson jacket and the silver glove, and I would break dance. Like, I love to break I dance. I busted my mouth doing a Michael Jackson, oh my gosh. Michael Jackson move. Oh, I did. Wow. No, it was bad. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, MJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, speaking of, um, MJ, I, I absolutely love Michael Jackson. Of I, I he was what just he's that? an icon. But <laughs> I um, was thinking about him, and I thought we need to bring those days back around. Where's my Mark Wahlberg? Where where is I? You know, and they're doing amazing things, great of things. Um, yeah. They've got their own things going on, but we need. And I I see the uh, young pop stars like Billie Eilish. Things uh, Billie Eilish is like number one. Um, but I was reading some of her music and I was like, okay, well, you know, she, uh, her music, 12 different people she set in a room and all 12 people all, out of all of her albums liked her music because wow. they're, it's so different. It's so diverse. Right. And so I thought, well, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't just pick one audience. Right. She went for 12. That mm -hmm. is to she me wants, uh, 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 all of it. Music to carry uh, everybody, yeah. everybody. Yeah. And so I thought through different people. That is super intelligent. That's smart. Very, very smart. Yeah. And so I think we're going to be seeing that a lot more, mm -hmm. um, especially with girls. Oh yeah. I think it's going to be really neat. Girls are, are taking a stand. Right. Um, and and also like the way like, so like yeah. everything, females' music has kind of you know it changes. Yes. That's a lot of it that used to be all about. Like the body image, and it's, right. you know, it's about you know half naked, and and then after a while it went into girl empowerment, like you know with Katy Perry and Raw, right. and then yes. Beyonce yes. with yes. Formation, and a lot of the the women you know kind of started saying no, you know we, we don't have to every time we're talking about you know a body part or mm -hmm. shaking a certain body part or you know exposing ourselves, let's. Let's go back to you know being you know natural. women and, and, and yeah, yeah and empowerment and we have something to say and we actually like want to make a, a positive change. So I'm loving where uh, and and also and now it's kind of gone back to if they're talking about the physicality of the woman in their music, they're talking about yes, I have curves and I love it Stat. and and right <laughs> and, 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 and 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 I'm celebrating it and not just using it as a tool. Yes. And, you know, and so I'm loving the way that the, the music industry, especially with the women, yeah, has oh, started know, to turn into this really great positive, you know, it and it's, it was really easy, like, for our show to find a piece of music by a woman that is strengthening and empowering, and so, and when the girls were walking out, they loved it because they're like, oh yeah, this Absolutely. is great, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a woman song, it talks about being strong and powerful, so... 
I'm, I'm loving where uh, all that and is going. And don't think to be a beauty queen, a model, or anything, you do not have to be a size zero. No. And well, perfect. I will tell you right now, um, in, in today, in 2019, it's, uh, it's really a big, huge trend to be very curvy right. and voluptuous. And, I mean, people absolutely love it. I mean, they are paying out the wazoo to have all of these right. accents, actually, right. you know. And it's really and beautiful. Say, and you just say, like, you know, be careful with that. Yes, um, be careful. Or you say, like, yeah, if you want to... You know, improve yourself in a, in, a, in a certain way. Absolutely, go for it. But also make sure Be that careful. the people yeah. that you go to are professionals. They know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and they're not just going to you know butcher you or do something um, you know, yeah. end up regretting and, and things like that. And so, I've seen that. So right. definitely do your homework before you um, alter mm -hmm. anything right. in your body or anything mm -hmm. on your body. Um, that's so important. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of butched, you know, hacked girls and right. even guys too. And then also, it's scary. Yeah. I see that like with women sometimes because and I saw it too in, in, in the in the dressing room where somebody would say something like oh my god you have such big hips and then the, the way they would say it and the, the person will almost feel as though they may be making fun right. of them or something right and then the other person would would take it as though you know I want what you have right. but I exactly. just don't have it right but I, I, I also I think it's the way that you say it to the person yes. right yes. because a lot of them we're not all built the same right you know yeah and so some of them are you know blessed in certain areas and some are not uh, but as women too I think it's important for us to uh, pay a compliment um, <laughs> kindly in a, nice <laughs> in a nice way right and then and I know sometimes you might say something and you're thinking that you're saying it in a, in a complimentary way, but it doesn't carry across that right. way. You know? Right, right. It comes yeah, across as, as something, maybe you're making fun of that person. Exactly. And, you know, because those are their features and yeah. things like that. So. Yeah, yeah, because I just be learned, honestly, I just learned what stacked was not not too long ago. Right. And this girl was like, wow, I didn't know you were so stacked. And I'm like, uh, like, are you making fun of me? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I am, right. you know. Um, but it's it's crazy because it actually when I had like uh, in my mid thirties, right? Um, I just for some reason I like started like gaining weight drastically, and I was like, what is going on? And so I had to really because I was so self conscious when I was younger. I was only like 115, maybe 120 pounds, all the way up to like 35. Right. So I was always a very petite person, mm -hmm. and then I was a you know larger chested person. But um, it was whenever I hit that, it really hit my self esteem. Right. Because for me, it wasn't about oh yeah curvy is it or this it wasn't that and at it that time really, it wasn't it wasn't sure, yeah. and and so i was like oh my gosh like what is going on like i'm gonna have to really work out hard and do all of these things um and it was just like I, it was different for me it was very very different right. now i'm just like okay it doesn't bother me at all but it took me a while i'm not gonna right. lie it took me a while so for girls who struggle with their self-image or things like that love yourself love love yourself um love who you are inside and out because when you love yourself you are you're confident and right. people see that confidence right. um and kill that negative attitude of nobody likes to be around negativity right they just don't mm -hmm. and so if you can kill that negativity and um gain confidence and love and learn to love yourself and uh, do things in in a mature smart way when you're younger we experiment and we go through a lot of things but right. don't allow it to carry you and into your 30s or until you're older don't make mistakes that you cannot clean up or and, fix and it's a struggle now too like you know when you sit with body image and, and you see we have come a long way right with mm -hmm. body image and stuff like that i've always been petite i've always been like small and when i was growing up when i was young my dad actually called me skinny my bones up <laughs> which, means, which means skin and bone, uh -huh. right? And and you know, my that was my nickname to him, skinny, 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 and I, I, mm -hmm. that's all I knew. And so uh, there was a certain point when my I lost my my birth father that I I went into this uh, self destruction where I I forced fed myself, okay, and I blew up and I became really really big, 
and because my frame was really not meant to carry all that weight, it became very uncomfortable. And so when mm -hmm. I started to get, uh, you know, like in my teen, my late teens, getting into my twenties, I kind of like lost all of that, and I came back to the the body mm -hmm. size that really w was my right. body size. And I, I've been in that like you know throughout my twenties and all. And so after I had like a few health issues that made me start to put on weight, I said it feel really uncomfortable because mm -hmm. I've really never been big. Right. And then when you are in like, I a social like, gathering, right? Yeah. yeah, the social gathering with people. And if somebody looks at me now, they're like, okay, yeah, she's slim, mm -hmm. but I, it's not slim for me. And in a way, like it's almost like people that are slim cannot say that they're fat because then people that are maybe slightly, right. they'll look at me like, oh, what are you talking yeah. about? Right. But I think we should be in a place where we should talk about how we feel mm -hmm. without yeah. hurting you know, the, yeah. the next person or the other person next to you. Um, and and it, it'd be okay, right? And, exactly. and then when I start talking about, oh, I'm getting back on like good eating habits because me and bread have a very very you good do relationship. Love bread, I remember <laughs> that. Listen, me and bread have a. <laughs> when I say this, I had bread before I came here. I had bread for breakfast. I had bread for lunch. Oh my god! No, I admit, seriously. I when I and then I also have like. All kinds of bread, so it's like you know the wheat and then the, yeah. the French and then the like. <laughs> no, me and bread are good <laughs> friends. I should have brought you some bread. <laughs> no, look for Keep bread. it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I love me some bread. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you know, like when I start to say I'm, like, I have to go back to good eating habits, and someone looks at me funny. It's like, no, you don't understand. It's you know, it's the way that I they feel, feel, right? You know, exactly. The way that I feel. I exactly. start to know when, you know, certain things start to you know, look different or feel different. Yes. I'm like, okay, yes. you know, I have to say bye to my friend for a little bit. <laughs> I will come back for you, darling. <laughs> but I have to stay away. Mine, I've been on this uh, cake of V8. And it's V8 is good for you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is more like the Clamata V8 with the um, 1,584 milligrams of salt in one little bottle. And so I was driving and I drank one. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best V8 I've ever had. Drank another one, like got halfway through, and I was like, my hands, my hands, my feet, everything felt so swollen. swollen. And I was like, what is going on? I don't, I'm reading, and, and my daughter's reading the bottle, and she's like, you just drink like, like triple your calorie, you know, for for salt, your salt okay. intake for, for like two days. And I was like, what? I was like, no, no way. Yes, be careful. Right. Be careful what you put in your body, because I am starting to realize you are what you eat. Of course. And, you know, that is definitely something. When I was younger, I never cared about what I ate. I yeah, ate metabolism is different when you're younger. Yes. Even, you know, and everybody's like, right. one day it's yeah. going to catch up to you. And I was like, yeah. ah, it's not going to catch You know, I'm right. like 30 something. I'm like, no, oh, you know, I, I felt great. And you no, know, that boom, used to happen. Me, you know, when I, was, when I was a teenager, and then, you know, people around me, the grown ups, and say, oh, wait until you, you're 20. And I was 20. Wait until you're 25. Yes. And I was yes. 25. And then wait until you're 30. I was 30. And then wait until you're 35. I was like, listen, I'm done waiting. I'm not going to wait anymore. But then 36 happened. That's what it was. And then 39. And now I'm starting to I was like, oh, there it is. There it is. It showed up. We are talking about women empowerment. I know a lot of beautiful, amazing women out there who are doing great things. Amanda Aww. is doing amazing things. Um, she has her own Hell company, Protection. I, I am <laughs> trying, um, you know, you guys, I've really been uh, dabbling and, and thinking about um, running for office. Absolutely. In, in the district, um, yeah. in the Woodlands, <laughs> Conroe, Conroe District. And so I've been really, really contemplating on that. And because I've always been one to want better for people. Right. That is just something I've always wanted. I've thought there are so many changes that I see and that I know that can be changed. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not do it? Um, and I thought, yeah, I was reading today and I was like, you know what? If these women can do these amazing, great things and they can, they can take all of that energy, positive energy, why can't I not run for office and do great things for, for my city? 
not only my city, my my state, for my country. I can we can do those things as women, and that's where it starts. It yes, starts when you you see that there's a change that needs to be done, and you strongly feel that you can be part of that change, and you can implement it. Yes, so I say go for it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I and so I was reading groom, dress nice. This is number three. Work on your self image. Number four, think positive, kill negative thoughts. Get to know yourself, start a journal, write your stuff down, write the negative things, the good things that happened, the bad things. Think about uh, bad things like when you were younger and all the negative and how you turn those into positive things. Act positive, be kind and generous. Generosity goes a long way. I consider myself a nice person and I promise you my network wouldn't be half as big if I didn't have the positive you know uh energy or you know if i wasn't a kind person right, right, right. now i don't ever like to be me but sometimes i have to be like hey wait a minute i'm getting taken advantage of or whatever so know know where you are don't allow people to step all over you walk all over you because you're kind don't allow that happen and i see that a lot in the industry because you're a nice person people take your generosity your kindness and they turn that against you and, right. and it makes you kind of bitter it makes you feel like, you know what, I don't want to work with this person anymore. So be careful out there because I promise you, you're a nice person, but there are a lot of sharks ready to eat you alive. <laughs> there are a lot of people. So, And if you, attract, if you have those kind of people in your life, you're not going to go very far because that, that's what you're keeping in your life. So get away from it. You know, God says... If there's a lot of negativity and you're you're around it and you've been around it, get away from it because we don't. Mean it. Number one, it hinders our growth with him, mm -hmm. and so it really does. And I, I found that whenever I was around negative people, um, I thought they're consuming so much of my time that I don't have time to grow spiritually, mm -hmm. mentally positive things I, I was too focused on what they were doing and how they were hurting me right. and so that is the number one thing get away from it love them I say love them from a distance that's what we can do the love thing. them from a distance yeah. because there if the people are there to un encourage and up uplift you and help you to be a powerful not just woman but a human being if they're not there to do that for you and they're not your cheerleaders you're in the wrong circle. Right. Just get out of it. I am actually have been looking at things and, and profiles and things like that. Not that there's a lot of people about to go because I right. want to, I want to be around good, energetic, uh, goal-oriented, like-minded people. That's exactly. what I want in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, so I am very thankful that I am gotten to the age where I can finally be like, I'm done. I, I'm done. I want to do great things for me, my family. And if I continue on this level or if I continue to allow people to step on you, mm -hmm. they will do it. So oh, yeah. just be careful. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to get a hold of Amanda, um, she has many great, amazing platforms. Aww. She has been a model for a very long time. She is an owner of a wonderful company. So if you want to, if you're in the Houston area, do you have a pageant coming up? January? Or yeah, so yeah, every day? Have, yeah, we have something coming up. Okay, January, what did you tell us about that? In the summer, too. Okay. So we're working on um, Miss uh, Africa America 2.0. Okay. Um, and we just plan to have like an official crowning uh, on that day. Okay. So January 11th, we're working on that, uh, and you know more information will be on our social media. Perfect. I'm pretty sure you can have all the yeah everything on there. So, if, so is it something that anyone in the area or around? Or yeah, so we have a, a model call coming up. So if you are interested in modeling and you want to be part of the show, or if you want to. Uh, in entertain your entertainer, your dancer, comedian, oh, nice. um, singer, um, instrumentalist, talent. Any, any, talent. any kind of talent, you know, if you speak fire, <laughs> oh, <laughs> anything. I can tell all my time. Does that count? Oh, my dear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that boy. is something people are like, that's <laughs> the weirdest, freakiest <laughs> thing because know. I'm like one in like a few of the world. That can do it, oh, and so goodness. it freaks people out. Yeah, it really does. Oh, it's we're it's weird. to say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so, and also, if you're interested in production and you want to know about, or you are in school for production, and you know, and 
love to see things come together, put things together in the background and, and all of that. We love that. Okay. Too. Well, we've been um, live and um, I, I really enjoyed my time with you. I just want to thank you. So thank you guys for everything. Um, we will be on next week with Visco Girls. And so you can know all about that. That's going to be um, junior high girls that are going to be, number one, giving advice. They're uh, very, very smart 4.0 students. I mean, they, they are doing amazing things in the community for their schools. And not only that, they want to teach us like what the new trends are and what to get your child for Christmas. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And all the lingo that goes with young All the lingo that young children. Because, because, it, because it, I cannot it, understand them when they're talking. Exactly. It says. <laughs> that and um, I forgot the other one, but you'll learn next week. So right. no, we're signing off, and thank you for uh, um, Amanda for your time. Oh, yeah. my pleasure. Thank you so much for time. Yes. So, bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>